Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to estimate the factor of safety for this slope using FLAC software which is using the finite difference method for estimating the factor of safety. I'm going to use this example from Rock Science website. This is the geometry of the slope and they are using slide 2 software to estimate the factor of safety. Slide 2 is using limit equilibrium method to estimate the factor of safety. In this method you don't need the stiffness for the material but in our case which is flag we need to define the stiffness parameters for our material uh, to be able to estimate the factor of safety using the strength reduction method. So first of all we're gonna start with the geometry, defining the geometry. I already defined it in fish language but I'm gonna show you how to use the interface uh, of flag to calculate the factor of safety. This is the fish language to estimate the factor of safety for that slope. You can see here we define the geometry, then we defined the materials, and then we define the property of the material and assign it to the geometry, and then we define the elastic or static boundary condition, and then we solve for elastic, and then the second save we just solve for the factor of safety. So to do that, we go to Generate, Geometry. This is the best way to define the geometry because you're going to have the mesh is inclined with the direction of the external slope. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So click on Geometry Builder, then Create Box, and then define the external boundary of the geometry. In our case, x minimum is 0, y minimum is 0, x max is 130, and then y max is 50. Click OK. I got these numbers actually from here. So we define, sorry, we define that external boundary based on these numbers. OK, then we click on Build. Click OK. Then click OK. Then click edit and now we're gonna split the blocks on that point, two points. We have one point here and one point here. Now let's define or move these points. Let's activate this and then click here. It's 30. This is 30 and this is, should be 50. 50 in y axis. Now let's define the x axis. For this point, it's going to be 50. And this point is going to be 50. This one's going to be 80. And this one's going to be 80 as well. After we define the external boundary, now we, co we can uh, go to the next step, which is the boundary. The external boundary static boundary I'm gonna activate the automatic option so we have ruler on the sides and fixed both an x and y axis on the bottom of the model which is typical and then we go to the mesh and assign the mesh as extra fine click OK now if you zoom in you will see the finite difference mesh is inclined with the external slope you see it has the same slope it's not like a horizontal mesh this, I found this method is the best way to define the finite difference mesh because you, you're going to avoid any errors during the seismic analysis or during the factor of safety calculations. Now we go to the fourth step, which is defining the material property. Click on material, then create. Let's name this sand. And then define the density. And define the stiffness parameters. We have to define the stiffness. It's not like uh, limit equilibrium. In limit equilibrium, you do need only friction angle and cohesion. But in finite difference, finite difference or finite element, you need to define the stiffness. And then cohesion, 5,000. So this is exactly like this one here. If we go down to the example, we will see the property. 5 kilopascal, 30 degree of uh, co uh, friction angle, 5, five kilopascal cohesion, and 19 for unit weight. 
So this is where I got the numbers from. Uh, be careful about the units. Friction angle is 30. And then click OK. Now we have the material defined here, but we haven't assigned it. To assign it, you just click on Set All. In this case, we have only one material, so so easy to assign it. If not, then you go to our to my uh, another video of flak in the in the same playlist to see how to define different material using table commands. Click on OK, and then click on Execute. We're gonna take that, copy it. and put it on the first save and then rebuild so I put the the code actually just in the first saving this is the way I like it to be and now actually uh, we are ready to go to solve for elastic so if we click on solve elastic and then click on rebuild it's gonna take a few minutes or a few seconds now the model is solved let's plot some values here go to plot model and then let's plot the for example total stress we have of course here at the surface we have zero as you can see and I, as long I, I, when you go down when the depth increase, of course, you're going to have more stresses. These stresses are compression, but FLAC use negative value for compression. Okay. So let's rename this. This is total stress. Okay. And let's plot another one. Plot um the strain increment which is ssi with the bond let's name it ssi shear strain increment okay and now let's go let's save this first saving now we save it let's go to the second save and um use this command here to solve for the factor of safety rebuild so it's going to take a few some time to calculate the factor of safety in a slide example we got one point almost one one point one uh, for factor of safety using uh, limit equilibrium method in uh, using slide 2 software from rock science Let's see how what what is the let's see how what is the value of the factor of safety using a finite difference uh, in FLAC. So it's now it's calculating, it's thinking, it's doing the calculations. So the the more you have fine mesh, the longer the analysis will be. So keep this in mind. We don't have any water table here, so it's dry soil, just dry slope, and we're just trying to estimate. It's very quick and easy analysis, just trying to compare finite difference with limited equilibrium. So we got 1.068, which is very close to the value. It's, we got there 1.1 in limited equilibrium. Now we got 1.1. If you want, like one, just one number after the decimal so we get the same exact answer you can uh, see the shape of the slip surface which is the critical slip surface that give gives us the lowest factor of safety let's compare this to the shape of the slip surface and limited equilibrium see if they are close so it starts at the corner and goes all the way not to the corner but there is some distance to the top corner or the upstream here you see 
so let's start from the corner and go all the way to the top let's see what we have here so it's go it's going actually above the corner and then it goes all the way close to that corner again on the top so it's it's a little bit different slip surface but the value of the factor of safety almost the same and this is the total says after the calculation of the factor of safety so I hope you enjoyed this video uh, this is the code I used you can actually instead of uh, using the the um, the interface you can use actually the the uh, fish language for example here let's plot the g num and g grid and if we go down zoom in all the way so now we have the grid number each grid number so we can actually make this better uh, here when we assign the boundary condition we we don't have all of we don't need to have all of these actually lines we can just delete everything or maybe just lower it down fix x and y from i equal to 1 right i equal to 1 all the way to the end of the module which is 155 and then j in this case equal to 1 so I, I told the software I want x, both x and y fixed in this boundary right the bottom and then only fix x when i equal to it's going to be equal to 1 right equal to 1 and j equal to 2 all the way to the top which is 47 and then again fix x when i equal to one hundred and fifty five and j equal to two until all the way to the top which is forty seven okay and we don't need all of that we just can delete the, all of that so we fixed both x and y at the bottom of the boundary of the model and then we fix we fix only i at the left external boundary and then we fixed the right external boundary for x here by using these commands let's now let's try to build We should get the same exact thing because uh, I just changed the code to make it like look better and easy to understand. What happened before in the previous code that I showed you? The code was assigning these static boundary condition for each region, so that's why it it gives it it makes it like this. It's a little bit confusing for some people. But now we make it more easy, I think, with using three lines instead of uh, six lines. Now we solved for static or uh, elastic. Let's go to, let's save first, and then go to the second saving and rebuild just to, just to preview that we're going to get the same factor of safety uh, if we choose that code. So this is the previous code here it's, uh, it's not clear for me which one is fixed which one is free the way i did it it's just like by using three lines um, it's basically it's easy to understand like this so we're saying fix here 
both x and y and here only x on this boundary so if we defined if we define the, the location of this line and the location of this line only and this line it will be easy to understand and very straightforward but the software was doing is defining three region and defining the boundary for each region that's not necessary we don't need to do that we just define it as the entire line here and this the entire line here and then the entire line here you don't need to define this line and then this line and then this line and assign the boundary condition for each one of these so now it's start calculating for the factor of safety the good thing so we got exactly the same 1.068 which is 1.1 and this is the shape of the critical slip surface the good thing about flag you can edit anything for example the the property of the material by just going here and edit anything you don't need to go back again and redo everything and start from beginning and define everything no if you need to do define redefine anything of the property you just come here and def redefine it and you can actually write the entire code by yourself and solve it instead of using the the enter the user interface of flack Thank you so much for watching. I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. Thanks. Bye.